Hello and welcome to this video. We're going to take a look at making a kick drum sound in Voltage Modular. So previously we looked at making an analog style hi-hat sound with a bit of randomness thrown in and we're going to take much the same kind of route for the kick drum sound. But kick drum sounds are a little bit more complicated. As we'll see, we'll end up with something a fair bit more complicated than the last one. But firstly, what's the kind of thing we're trying to achieve? So let's just have a look in WaveLab at an 808 and a 909 kick drum. Here you can see the 808 kick, it's a long one, and the main things are, you can see that it tails off fairly uniformly, and if we zoom in, we can see that it's just really a sine wave, and it changes in pitch, it's lower in pitch at the end. And if we play this, you'll hear that mm sound. Now if we look at a 909 kick, we can see much the same, although it happens much quicker, but the effect, the change of pitch is much more dramatic. So you can see here the waveform, or the wavelength rather, is fairly short, whereas here it's much longer and we get a much more pronounced effect as a result. So that's the kind of thing we're gonna try and emulate, see what we can come up with. Let's add some modules in voltage. So first things first, let's add an envelope generator, an oscillator, and an amplifier. So we're gonna have the output of the oscillator on sine wave for the time being, and that's gonna go into our input for our amplifier. Our output is gonna go out to our main outs, and then we're gonna control the level of the amplifier with the envelope generator, and then just trigger that with the gate. So here we have, at the moment, it's a, it's a synth which has no pitch control. So we're not wiring up the pitch control. We're just gonna have that so we can tune it manually. Now, the envelope generator needs to follow what we've already seen. So we're gonna have no sustain. Let's say 200 milliseconds or so of delay decay time. And then just a little bit of release just in case. And that's already much more like it in terms of the, the volume profile. Now what we wanna do is change the pitch of the oscillator. So to do that, I'm gonna move this across to make it a little easier to see the different sections. And we're gonna have another envelope generator. So I'm just gonna add that in. Here it is. So again, connect that up to the gate. And then the output here is gonna to go to our pitch control voltage. And mimicking the envelope here roughly will give us a much more synthetic drum kind of sound. So it's a bit extreme at the moment because this is sending out too much of a signal. But we can soon fix that with the attenuverter. So popping one of those in, we take that output put it into here, and then the output from there. We'll go into there, and then we can control the severity of this with that. So we've got control of the time here and how much it's doing here, and that's already much more like it. So if we wanted to go for the 808 style longer one, we could make this much longer, obviously make this longer, and then control this. That probably still needs to be longer. But with a bit of tweaking, you could get that. But we're gonna go back to these kind of numbers and go more for the 909. So we can tune that pretty quickly. So now we've got that, let's look at some other elements. So typically, a, a bass drum sound will also have a noise signal in there. So we're gonna need much the same as this again. So let's just move this across. And we're gonna put in an envelope generator, an amplifier, and a noise source. So this noise generator here. So I'm just gonna put this again on the left so it makes a little more sense. So this white noise signal is gonna come out of they're going to the amplifier. This again is gonna be controlled by the gate. 
And again, I'm going to make that fairly similar with that controlling that. So now we've got an individual noise signal and now we're going to need a mixer. So let's get the six input mixer and we're just going to disconnect our output here. So that's going to be our level for our main oscillator and then we're going to have also level for our noise signal. And once we've connected up the output, we get that. Now, obviously, that sounds like a, a snare drum. And in fact, I'm sure with a bit of tweaking, you could do that. But we just want a little bit of it. And most importantly, we want it to happen. So we just get a tiny little bit of noise at the beginning, which gives you that kind of clicky attack that you get with some bass drums. Because otherwise, it's really all low frequency. And a low frequency sound doesn't really have an attack. So a bit of tweaking of this and it just gives it that attack and bite at the beginning. Now obviously, say you could tweak these and the pitches, etc., and come up with a snare sound, etc., that kind of thing. Maybe we'll look at that another day. But now what we want to do is to add a bit of randomness in there as well because at the moment it's totally uniform. Every time I press a key, it's it's the same thing. So we want to add a bit more randomness in. So I'm going to add in some more modules so I'm just going to move this over out of the way for the moment. And then we need to add in sample and hold. And this is going to give us a variable control, which we're going to put in with the pitch. So we're also going to need to add in another six input mixer. So now we're pretty full, but I'm going to turn this off so we can see what's going on. So I'm going to move this across so we can just sort of understand which modules are which. So here's our sample and hold, which we're going to feed white noise. So again, that's going to be getting that. And this is similar to the, in fact, it's exactly the same as the randomness from the hi-hat. So this is getting this random signal, which we're going to slow down. It's going to be with an external trigger from there. And then this output is going to be fed to pitch CV, but we also need to feed it this pitch output as well so this mixer is going to be mixing control signals so again sample and hold output goes to there and we can see it's already outputting something and then the pitch control is going to go to there and now every time you play it yeah it's too too different obviously so this is the randomness control which you can label up easily enough you can just right click or two finger tap, and type something in. So there we got random there. So just a little bit of randomness in there. And now we've got that kick drum control. And now we can start tweaking to get the sound we want. But say we've got some randomness in there. We've got this uh, pitch being controlled by that as well. Of course, you can add a filter as well. So you may want to add that into the final mix. So we're just going to zoom out momentarily. And let's add in the filter. And then that output here can just go through the filter. And we're going to send that low pass output again to the stereo out. And you can control it here as well. So there's definitely a difference between doing that versus turning down the amount of noise which is in the signal. Let's just zoom in a bit more so we can see what's going on. And of course, you could choose to maybe make this work off velocity. So we could modulate this frequency by velocity. So let's bring that velocity here. And then put that so it's positive a bit and maybe bring this down. Maybe even more. So now we've got a velocity sensitive but still random uh, kick drum patch. So with a bit of tweaking, you've got quite a few knobs to tweak, obviously. But again, as ever, you can set these to your performance controls for when you refer back to this. But already with 
just those few modules which are all in the free version of Voltage and as you can see this is Voltage 2 so it's looking updated and, and spanky. Uh, you can quickly set up something where you've got a nice responsive kick drum which isn't the same every time which will add some life to your sequencing even if you change nothing other than randomize the velocity. That of course can be a jumping off point for creating a snare drum sound as well because we've got most of the elements we need for that. We'll hopefully look at that in a future video. But I hope you found that useful and I'll see you again soon.